Hi, my name's Rob Ray from MP3 Car. We're here at the AFK Fest 2009 in Baltimore, Maryland. And I'm here with uh, Greg Plantiver and Mitch Solomon. And uh, we had a little bit of a secret contest going on today where Mitch was going to go around and pick the most technically interesting car. So, Greg, you have been awarded the <laughs> prize of the most interesting Sir. Uh, Thank car you. here technically so thank you oh sure my pleasure thanks a lot for coming out and uh, and being part of the forums and you know all of your activity in the community and oh, love it it's such a it's such a great group of people I mean it's I always thought it was amazing every time I come to one of these meets it's everyone has the same goal in mind you know putting a car putting a PC in a car and everyone does it a different way it's a different car it's a different solution even you know people who use the same software and similar hardware come out come about the end result I'm like, Totally different directions. There's so many different ways to get there. Yeah. So many great ideas. Uh, I've I've seen ideas from other people and stolen them, and I know at least one car here stole one of my ideas. So. Right. Well, it's all it's, it's sharing. That's exactly. what the community is all about. Exactly. So. Well, why don't we go take a look inside the car? Do you mind giving us a, a tour of, of some of the stuff that you've done? I'd love to. All right, great. This doesn't even look like that. Uh, there's a PC installed here. It's, uh, I think that was one of the things that impressed Mitch so much is that it looks really clean, like it just came out of the factory. Well, that was my goal. I mean, I didn't want to add bells and whistles and lights and switches and everything else. I wanted it to be as factory looking as possible. I mean, for better or worse, something I didn't realize when I bought this car is the car gets attention. You know, I've had people stop me at stoplights and ask me questions about it. So I didn't want to be, hey, look at me, hey, look at me. I don't have stickers with Alpine or whatever, you know, kind of showing off. I wanted it to be as, as low key as possible. Plus, Lexus did such a nice job with the interior, it'd be a shame to mess it up. So, with that in mind, um, the car comes with factory navigation behind this really nice uh, bird's eye maple screen, powered screen. You press the open button, the screen emerges read of the lawyer screen and there's factory navigation so the way that all the cars come done um, I wanted to uh, integrate uh, with that existing screen so I bought a little inter a video interface box it gives me two video interfaces one is dedicated to a backup camera I put the car in reverse and there's what's behind us and the other is to a second video input um, it came with a little toggle switch like a 99 cent Radio Shack toggle switch that I was looked at it and said I'm not gonna drill a hole in my leather or my wood and put this switch here I tried to figure out what what's the best way to do this, what's the most elegant way to do this. And I realized, once the screen is open, there's an open and a close button for the screen. Once the screen is open, the open button doesn't do anything. So I wired it, so when you press the open button multiple times, it toggles between the two video inputs. The car PC is hooked to one, factory navigation is the other. So it was very easy to switch back and forth uh, without any trouble, without digging around or making it look ugly. Uh, I chose um, Centrifuge as the front end software just because it's it's so easy to use, so easy to set up. I mean, it's obviously a pay version, uh, pay front end. There's a lot of um, open source, free front ends people like uh, to be cost effective. But Centrifuge is just so incredibly simple to set up, and their support is great, both on their own forum and on uh, mp3car.com's forum. Uh, they're very active there. A lot of folks using it. A lot of good information. A lot of a lot of help. Um, to control the car. Uh, the control of the car PC, I originally had a little mouse pad uh, on the center console, but I found, you know, I'm driving along, the um, sun's beating down, and I'm trying to select different things. I need to find the mouse arrow, and I found myself doing like this, trying to find, moving around, trying to make some motion to see the mouse arrow to find it, and it was frustrating. Uh, so I ended up using the 3D Connection uh, Space Navigator, which is really designed for 3D CAD work for moving around and, and 3D navigating through Google Maps and that kind of thing. But uh, one of the people on one of the forums uh, wrote a third-party driver for it that um, takes all the different motions and converts them into keyboard commands. So basically, it's a really fancy keyboard. Centrifuge takes whatever commands I want, you know, keyboard commands, and converts them in, um, and does the different commands. If I want to select MP3s, I simply rock the thing forward, and it's playing a music video I had going on there. Uh, I can pull up to go back to the home screen. It brings up satellite radio. I can scroll through the list of various songs and, uh, and select them. And the nice thing about using the wheel, or the uh, the knob to do this, is I can look at it and see what's going on. But also, if I'm in navigation mode and I'm following directions, yeah. I can easily change stations and select different things without even looking at it. So I keep my eye on the road, and I still have the functionality okay. I need to uh, yeah. to change stations, whatever. If we need to get a little fancier, uh, more control underneath the center console is a little uh, touchpad, uh, mouse pad, and a um, a little QWERTY keyboard uh, for quick, uh, quickly scrolling through various things. I've got a switch that lets me shut the machine down, restart it um, if I need to do anything. Uh, if, if, of course, it's Windows, so once in a while you have to reboot it or whatever. If you have a problem, you can, uh, I can do it all from here. You can also shut it down and leave it shut down, so if I'm giving it to a valet, 
the PC is turned off. Mm -hmm. Very, uh, very far underneath, I've got um, a switch to uh, override the power antenna because when you go to when you put an auxiliary input, which I'm using, it of course turns turns the antenna off. So I have a, a manual override for that, and I have a little USB uh, panel jack. So when I want to import uh, MP3s or playlists or update the software, so we plug a USB stick in right there. And you know, so everything I need to do with the car PC, I can do from right here. Mm -hmm. It's not in the glove box. It's not in the trunk. It's not somewhere else. All the controls I need are within my reach from the driver's seat. Um, the PC itself is located in the trunk, but like I said, I've remoted the, the the power controls. Um, all the media and input and output are all up here. It's just a box, motherboard, you know, memory, hard drive, and stuff are stuffed away in the trunk out of the way. Okay. Well, maybe we should take a look in the trunk and sure. see what's there. In the trunk of the car, the uh, the HD radio module is underneath this, this, underneath here. The Sirius radio is back underneath here. Um, Mitch has uh, a great uh, audio switch box he makes. It takes uh, four line ins, gives you one out, and switches it via USB. Uh, that little box is actually right here. So my HD radio audio goes through here. My Sir uh, Sirius radio goes audio goes through here. And the software does the switching for me, so I don't need multiple sound cards. Because obviously any PC sound card is going to have one line in. But everything stays tucked away out of the way. There's not a lot of trunk space to begin with, with it being a convertible, with it being a small car. Uh, the PC is tucked away in this corner right over here. But again, there's no optical drive. I took um, the front cover of this particular case has uh, a, uh, a circuit board in the front that has a power switch and hard drive light and, and a couple of um, 90 degree USB connectors designed for a Wi-Fi card or Bluetooth. Again, I wasn't using them, so I took those out and there was enough room behind that to put the uh, M2 HEX power supply back there. So everything is completely inside that one case, nice and neat. I've got a little uh, quick release connector in there that has power, the constant power, the switch power, the ground, and the two wires for the front panel switch, which is going to remote it up front. Mm -hmm. So if I want to take it out and work on it upstairs, unplug that, unplug my Very USB, nice. and walk away. Well, thanks a lot for giving us a demo of the car. Thank thanks you. for coming out to the show. Thank you. And thank you, Mitch.